We're in a very interesting place with AI today. I think we're going through, as an industry, massive transition, but also the promises of AI are simply not being realized because in many cases we have the wrong approach. My name is Andrew Coward. I'm the general manager for software networking at IBM. So when we think about AI, we tend to think today about LLMs. When we think about networks and providing answers and deep insight into what's going on in a network and how we might fix it, uh, we tend to think about logs. It turns out that time series data and logging and all the things we get out of the network and LLMs today don't play nicely together, which might explain why we're not seeing great results. Here at IBM, obviously, we've been working on AI for a very long time. Uh, and through that 20 plus year period, we've understood and come to understand a lot about how you obviously process data and about how you use different technologies. So our viewpoint for getting the most out of AI in networking is actually we have to combine technologies. We have to combine different AI methods, actually different statistical methods together with LLMs to get the right answer. And it turns out that one model or one method isn't actually enough. We need many and we need different ones and we need to bring them all together. In fact, we think there's going to be a hierarchy of models that are going to be needed. Now, let me give you an example. Um, if you ever sat in a call center uh, from one of the major mobile operators, and it's, it's quite interesting and fun if you actually get to do that, they get all kinds of calls, as you might imagine, every day. The most frustrating call, of course, is the one that says, Instagram doesn't work right now, or TikTok, I can't upload something, or it's really slow. And um, getting to the answer of those types of problems um, is really quite challenging today based off the information that we have. But think about that from an AI construct, right? So what can we do? We can identify the user, we can identify their device, we can identify fairly quickly what they've been doing. Now we need to identify where the issue is. And so this is where the different models and the different types of systems need to come together. Um, and it's kind of like we have to go house by house, if you like, to, to check whether each of the individual elements within the network may be responsible for this. Has there been an outage in the radio network near where the subscriber is? Or is there a problem with the backhaul? Um, is there congestion? So you can see, see kind of system by system, we need to be able to identify and isolate these things. Um, and as I say, LLMs by themselves aren't good enough to analyze time series data simply because they don't really understand time in the same way that we do. And so what we need to do is first apply things like graph or other um, AI technologies into that time series data and say, okay, over the last hour, we've seen these types of events happen in the RAN, these types of events happen on the back, or these types of events happen on the core and so on, all the way through to the applications. And um, then we can bring that up to an LLM to help us um, codify or create language around what actually happened and then inform. Um, and so an action might well be, okay, well, we ha you had a radio outage or there's been extreme congestion because there's a sports game that's happening in your area or something like that. But then think about what the remedy might be um, and what you might want to start adding into a ticket or a problem, whether it's created by somebody calling in or whether it's created by a system or alert or something is to surround what happened with details from each of the domains and then summarize the problem was in the radio network or the problem was in the internet gateway or firewall, some kind of combination of that. And by doing that, uh, we're basically going and bringing up the hierarchy of these models you know, segment by segment to create the complete picture. Now, telco networks um, throw off uh, terabytes of data in a very fast amount of time. So one of the big challenges, of course, is that we have a data problem and being able to um, aggregate in real time and then shrink and, and create decisions and understand things very quickly at this massive scale becomes really important. Um, some telcos have spent literally hundreds of millions of dollars building telemetry networks. Others haven't really got very far on that journey. And so for us to be able to get to this level of data a level of understanding requires that the data we bring in has been uh, groomed, understood, um, and hopefully shrunk, <laughs> if you like, before we process it, because we can't really afford 
to store this volume of data for any length of time. And so having collectors that, that pre-process and, and run AI algorithms that are pretty widely distributed is also going to be important um, in this so that you don't try and centralize everything because you're just going to get over, overweight with information. So once you've got a good understanding of exactly what it is that happened and you've got some recommended steps to actually do something about it, there's a next part of AI that needs to kick in. Does AI, and, and this is where LLMs are really useful actually, understand what remedial actions you could take? Has it ingested all the manuals and all of the help scripts and all of the cookbooks from all the pieces of equipment across your network so that it can now start saying, okay, well, if you have this type of problem, you should look at it this way. Has it trolled um, all of the uh, communities for people who might have seen similar issues that have created fixes? Um, and so that kind of um, LLM type model then applies to the, how do I go fix this? This could then obviously be pushed into a ticket um, or what you might want to do, of course, is automate the process around how you then go make that change. So if you're making a configuration change, how would you make that configuration change? And this is where the next part of the problem becomes, uh, which actually is a much larger problem in telcos than the data collection problem, which is the automation and the ability to run scripts and manage how configurations are changed and managed because there's far too much manual intervention going on with people logging into systems and making manual changes and recording them somewhere and hoping for the best. And so in order for AI to really play out and, and value to be created in this automation side then, we need to make sure not only have we got the collection and telemetry done properly, but we've also got the automation framework. This isn't AI per se, running APIs to go push a configuration change might be driven by AI, but the mechanism to do it is something that's in inherent in the network. In Land of Telcos, we spent a lot of time talking about API-ifying the network. I'm not sure that's even still a term, but when we think about APIs in telco land, we tend to think about it as an external event, not an internal um, process. And so what we see is the need to create APIs at each level in the network. So to go back to the story of, you know, looking at the radio separately to the transport, separately to the backhaul, then we're going to need to basically pull um, the configuration and, and, the, and, the, and the domains for automation into each one of those areas, API, API, create APIs around them so that we can then drive them with, with automation. So when you say, go make that change to create more capacity because 100,000 people have shown up in this cell site, then you are um, making that change in a way that's understood in a, in, a, in a way that has been done hundreds of times before, and you're not making a one-off change for a one-off incident. So kind of bringing all this together, we're kind of at this really exciting place. As IBM, um, as you can imagine, I think we, we see ourselves at the forefront of many of these different technologies, telemetry, automation, AI, um, but there's so much work to do in each one of our customers to bring um, the reality of AI to reduce the operational cost, to reduce the time to fix issues and to increase customer satisfaction, all those outcomes that we really, really want. Um, we've got a lot of work to do to put the infrastructure in place to get the AI to the place where we can now drive it. Um, and that's our passion and that's what we're gonna be spending the next few years doing. Mm -hmm.